Welcome to this video on Persistent Perceptual Postural Dizziness, also known as 3PD. Before we begin, consider the following questions. What is 3PD and why does it develop? What are characteristic features of 3PD in the history? What might be seen on clinical examination? And what are the main treatment strategies for 3PD? To recap, one sense of balance is derived from multiple sensory afferents, including the vestibular apparatus, but also vision and proprioception. These inputs are processed by the brain, which itself requires adequate perfusion to function. If a patient develops an acute vestibular event, such as from BPPV, Meniere's, vestibular neuronitis or vestibular migraine, they may compensate by increasing reliance on visual and proprioceptive cues. Some patients never regain their previous level of vestibular function, and this is likely due to underactivity and reduced connectivity of their vestibular cortical networks, and so the brain fails to recalibrate balance and spatial orientation correctly, with an over-reliance on visual and proprioceptive cues. 3PD is a relatively new clinical condition, described in 2017 by the Barani Society, and encompasses a number of different conditions that may have previously been termed as visual vertigo, phobic postural vertigo, psychogenic dizziness, and chronic subjective dizziness. In 70% of cases, the symptoms begin with an acute vestibular or medical event, while in 30% it may begin with an acute psychological event, such as a stressful life event. Anxiety-related personality traits or those with a high level of body vigilance are more likely to develop 3PD. Patients with 3PD typically present with the following features in the history. A triggering event such as an acute vestibular disorder or a period of significant stress or illness. Persistent non-spinning dizziness or unsteadiness lasting for a minimum of three months or more. Symptoms are present on most days but can be interrupted by breaks lasting a few hours or even days. Symptoms are worsened by an upright posture including sitting, standing and walking. They may also be worse with passive travel, for example on an escalator, an elevator or in a vehicle. Symptoms can be worse in a busy or motion-rich visual environment such as supermarkets, escalators or shopping centres. The patient may report a fluctuating intensity of symptoms, often worsening in stressful situations or with fatigue. And patients may also report avoidance behaviours to reduce exposure to symptom-triggering environments or activities. Clinical examination aims to assess for any other vestibular or neurological causes of the disequilibrium, along with assessing the patient's compensatory status. Findings may include normal or non-specific results on standard neurological and vestibular tests, an increased postural sway or stiffening of the trunk during balance tests such as Romberg's, anxiety or hypervigilance about balance or movement, observable during their gait assessment and may include behaviours such as reaching for walls while walking. Patients may also have a stiffened postural control with reduced arm swing and an on-block movement of their trunk and head. Typically you would see negative results on diagnostic tests for other vestibular disorders such as the dix hall pike test and this would reinforce the diagnosis of 3PD. Computerised dynamic posturography would also demonstrate an over-reliance on visual and proprioceptive cues. The treatment of 3PD involves a multidisciplinary approach, including education reassurance, vestibular rehabilitation therapy, cognitive behavioural therapy, medications and lifestyle modifications. Oftentimes, educating the patients about their diagnosis and the nature of 3PD can help reduce anxiety and improve their understanding of the condition. This can reassure patients that 3PD is a functional disorder and not a sign of a more serious neurological disease and that with treatment the condition can expect to improve. Vestibular rehabilitation aims to desensitise patients to motion and visual stimuli, improving balance and reducing dizziness through repeated exposure to symptom-provoking manoeuvres in a controlled manner. CBT addresses underlying anxieties and maladaptive thought patterns relating to dizziness and balance and teaches coping strategies to manage symptoms and reduce avoidance behaviours. Medications can be useful such as SSRIs or SNRIs which can be effective in reducing symptoms of triple PD, especially in patients with concurrent anxiety or depression. Vestibular suppressants are generally not recommended for long-term use as they can interfere with the process of vestibular compensation. Finally, lifestyle modifications including regular physical activity, stress management such as through yoga, meditation or mindfulness and sleep hygiene can help improve overall health and reduce symptom triggers. 
I hope you found this video to be useful. Please consider subscribing and let us know what you'd like us to cover next.